going to do some juggling or a bit of a da, 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 no okay, there we go hey no juggling <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i'm just going to revisit uh i did a live this week with yana martins on this actual topic of linkedin and company pages but i think it's really relevant to this group because a lot of the tips we brought up is actually a misconception a lot of uh, solopreneurs who would be in this meeting think about as what is a company page and why do I need it when I'm not really a, a company with lots of people and things like that. So uh, for someone like Nelly, who has a big team, a company page is very relevant. For others in this group, it may not be as relevant because you're the individual who's running your business. But I want to show you hopefully some tips in this that will show you a real need for it and what how you can make it benefit your business. Um, so getting right into it before I do. This is my crazy family and you're probably going to hear them in the background if you haven't heard them already because uh, they're up and about so but i have twin girls uh penelope and phoebe they're identical twins uh so uh picking them apart actually is quite easy because of phoebe's personality she is a very loud and boisterous one uh she's the one at the front there with the cheeky grin so uh a dead giveaway who she is if you get to know them uh my partner sharon my partner in crime is in the background there uh and jack who's sitting on top of her and i have a 23 year old daughter for those that, that try to work out the maths on that yes i was about three or four when that all happened i was an early charmer um no joking uh that's uh but she's a gorgeous girl we uh we get along famously uh uh, to not hide anything, I was born in Ballarat and bred and then moved down to Melbourne to study and then I uh, worked in PR and advertising in the early noughties winning plenty of awards with uh, Mars campaigns, Yellow Pages and other brands that you would know of in that period. That taught me a lot uh, and I was able to go out and as a, there is there's a notable mention about the uh, interactive drop down banner award. Um, and I was able to launch the Me Bank at that time with that agency uh, and we've all seen where that's all going. Uh, because of what I was doing around then I started tinkering with it, uh, running an agency. And then in 2005, I actually formed Cube. And then Cube's had a few iterations, a few different lives to it, but it's where I've ended up. But it's still sticking to the core of everything I do is based on a strategic approach before applying it to the creative. And then it comes down to the execution of those ideas. Um, and I work with people to try and find what is the best approach in your world for applying a strategic, it doesn't need to be big, but just at least some kind of strategic approach to allow the creative to then get into the right medium and go there. Uh, that has led me to uh, social media lately, but I have the branding marketing in my background, but I apply it essentially to social media because it's the one thing that most people are really trying to understand at the moment. They generally have had a graphic designer or someone work with them on their brand. And now it's like, how do you get your message out there? Or how do you, your website, which is not getting traffic, how do you get people back to it? And that's how I help people. Um, so the reason I picked LinkedIn is because and LinkedIn company pages specifically today is because it's a really underutilized thing. Now, if you set up your profile and you say you work for somebody or you're working for yourself, what most people forget to do is set up the company page. And what happens is you end up with a little gray icon beside your name and it's, it's there. So your company may exist, but it doesn't show up with an icon. And that's where some credibility can straight away be taken away from you because they feel like it's unfinished. It's not quite right. Um, that maybe you're not credible enough to work with because you, the company you're working with doesn't kind of exist in the virtual world. So it's really a brand perception that you're trying to overcome here is that your brand is credible. So one of the things I'd love you to take away from today is if you haven't done it, is jump in and create the company page. If you need help with that, obviously I'm here to help you, but it is a uh, thing I can talk about. The reason I'm going to send you the link to the live is because in the live I do show you how to do it. So uh, rather than do that today, I'm just going to highlight the fact that it is there to be done and it's something you should look at. With the LinkedIn company page, it's also a chance to be a public relation opportunity. So uh, with that, what I mean is that you can put in your private posting stuff about you and what's going on, but you can separate yourself by putting the company page there and talking in like a third person scenario where you say, so for example, um, Varsha with what you're doing, um, there's going to be a lot talked about with what you do with us coming out of COVID and a lot of stories that weren't able to be talked about and now gonna start coming out. So if you were out there talking about yourself on the company page, it would build your credibility. And then they'd find out that there is a mediator in your team called Varsha, and then they'd come across to you and look at you. So that's a way you can attract them through a company that's making a bigger profile for you. And then coming down to that, the same works with everyone in this group in what you're doing. 
Um, so then there's reaching your target audiences. One of the, one of the very different things about uh, a company page is you can actually, when you go post, you can choose who you want that to go to. So if you uh, know who your niche audience is and who you need to target, then there is a way when you click post, you can choose who's going to see that. Um, and that is a really valuable way to, again, separate who sees the information. The reason I highlight that is most of us on this uh, uh, call today would actually understand that I'd rather get information that I want to see than a whole bunch of stuff I don't want to see. And when you see stuff you want to see, you're more likely to engage with it, more likely to click on it, more likely to comment or things like that. So think about that as an advantage of putting out content. I'd rather get to 10 people that want to buy than 100 people that just want to keep scrolling past me because you can see that there's no in interaction, no reason to do that because it's only 100 people that don't want what you offer. So think about that. Another benefit of a com company page is it provides some great SEO. Because it's a company and not the individual, uh, when people are, say, typing in, I want an accountant, it's like more likely to pick up you because you're proactively running through and maybe you've mentioned something about the accountant and you've put in something that's a buzzword, whether it be something that's going on right now about the, the COVID and the job keeper and job uh, whatever's that are going on, or if there's a GST announcement, you know, so if you're putting stuff into your feed, it may be the your thing will pop up because of the company thing. And on that showcase pages, most people don't understand what these are or have come across them, but you will have seen them. And the showcase page is essentially, if you have, like I just mentioned, Nelly, because I did this example the other day, if you had a JobKeeper showcase page, you could put all your JobKeeper content into that showcase page, but it would still link back to your main page on your company page. And so you can separate your content out, but you can lead generate, which is the next thing on that um, list there, to people who are specifically looking for JobKeeper and it lead generates for your business where when you're doing your own profile, it's your profile. So it's only one feed where you do company pages, you can separate your feeds and put them into different channels, which may be useful for your business, uh, depending on what you're doing. And I'm, I do love analytics. So what it does provide is some analytics that you can look at behind it to actually see uh, and in the live, when you look at it, you'll see that the company was an IT company and they had a lot of engineering clients, which meant that they could target their content to engineering. But in the list was a HR company. So if they wanted to get um, Shay interested in what they were doing, then they would post and target people like Shay by putting posts out relevant to HR and how the IT background could help them, right? So that would maybe attract someone like Shay in this group to them because all of a sudden she in her feed is getting targeted content from that company based on her interests that she's shown with HR. Um, so I just really want to run through extension of what I've just talked about and talking about the top 10 tips for leveraging your business. Um, it really works when it runs along your own profile, but if you have staff members, uh, which I've actually got on number five, um, I talk about this in the live. So Nelly, because you've got a big team, if your company did a post, there is an option there to click uh, uh, let employees know. So if the employees are connected to that page and they've said that they're working for O'Brien's, you can let them know that a post has gone out that O'Brien have put out as the company voice, okay? Then what we would encourage people like, uh, in your case, uh, Nelly as the, uh, the person with a bunch of people, those employees, you would brief them on what to do once they see that notification. And that would be to share that content and have their own comments on it. And then that means that instead of the company only getting to maybe 100 people, it gets to those 10, 20, 30 employees who then makes that voice now go out to their 100 people. So now all of a sudden we've got three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 people seeing it um, that depending on the size of obviously your business that you wouldn't have been able to get in front of. But because you have that company strategy, you can now volume and amplify that voice and that communication. So it's again, another great way if you've got a sizable business or you've got members in your team to get a voice out there. Um, it's also... Uh, I'll talk about defining your audience and targets later in this meeting, but most importantly, I want to um, talk about rich media. It's something that you need to think about. Okay. So um, a photographer such as we've got in this group, Costa does an amazing job at taking photos, but that only takes part of the story. What you need to do is have those amazing photos like Costa's doing or the copywriting that Sarah might do, 
but then add video into the story. And that's why I was talking about lives. If you can't create the content, then do some lives and then that live will create content. And then you can take that content into 30 second outtakes. You can take it into uh, a, a particular topic or you might be able to create a webinar series, which is a number of our team members in this group are starting to do in their kind of group. Okay, so think about that. The other thing too is you can sponsor content. So you can actually repurpose content and then advertise that content on a particular topic and advertise as the company. And then that company raises the awareness of your team members and that may lead to a multiple ways of getting to your, um, your business getting lead generation. Um, obviously publishing engaging content. So right now with us coming out of COVID, there are a number of ways your business or leading up to Christmas is something else I talk to a number of my clients about right now is it may be a bit late because we're getting into the end of the month of November, but if it's still relevant and there's still like, if your business needs a cutoff point where it's like the 7th of December is when the last day you can post out whatever you're doing, then that is a communication that you should be putting into uh, the area and telling people about it in the lead up to that. So it's like, um, especially real estate, I'm sure Zeno, uh, for most of the real estate clients I have, there is a period in December where you have to stop really selling hard because there's just a, a lack of interest because everyone starts getting into Santa mode and or they want to more, concentrate more on the presents they're getting for their family than actually buying property so that things quiet down. But they need to lead up to that and then think about coming out of Christmas, those things. So a good example for Zeno is that period before Christmas and post Christmas, what he would be doing in this medium to try and get his message out there. Um, so with what I'm talking about, it really does align with what your business goals are. And I've got this on the screen and a lot of you have seen this with previous presentations I've done, but it's essentially a strategy I use with most clients. And it's based on, as you can see in the left-hand corner there, the business strategy sits at the bottom of the house. And the reason I mention this is because essentially if you jump to where I help people out with promotions and communication, but you don't have a business strategy at the bottom of a base foundation, it generally will collapse in on itself. It won't get the results you want. It won't get the expectations and in fact, you won't even know why you're doing the, the communication because you won't know whether it's good or bad because you haven't actually worked out what is a, a successful return on what you're doing. So that's what I work on with uh, clients. And what's really interesting about this is that you and your business is in as unique and you don't have what others have, right? So as a individual, your DNA makes you different, but your team make you different, your connections make you different, your audiences. So when people think, oh, look, there's there's 10 other mortgage brokers out there or there's 10 other real estate agents, whatever the case be, they aren't you. You bring your own DNA and your own personality to it and your connections. So Zeno, as an example in our group, as a real estate agent, there's lots of real estate agents and we probably go, oh, they're all the same. But I know from working with Zeno and what others have said about Zeno, he's a very different real estate agent and he's part of Rob. So he's got a different connection group in here. So no one else has the Rob group because he's our sole real estate guy in this thing. So that's his point of difference from a lot of people. And they're the things you've got to try to pull out and find your voice and your difference and then use that. And I, I guess um, I will jump in, Vash, I'll put you on the spot. Do you want to have a quick uh, shout out about what you've found with doing lives? Um, it was actually a lot of fun, Chris, truth be told. Yep. Yep. Um, Chris actually did tell me to practice a few times. I didn't have to practice. It just came naturally. I just put it in front of my in front of my face and I just started chatting and it was quite easy, free flowing. Um, and Chris is right. You've got to have a topic. I mean, I hadn't been on my Facebook page for a very long time. So it was me more or less telling everyone what I've been up to. But um, now I'm sort of focusing on something different each week. I haven't done one for a week, but this Saturday I'll put something live on um, it's a big day for the Hindu festival. We've got our Diwali coming up. So I'll put something around that and sort of educate the clients on that a little bit as well. And, and then put my business out there. I try to focus a lot on me and then at the same time, put in the business here and there. So it sort of comes out, but I'm trying to advertise me more than the business itself. So, um, because I find a lot of people do want to connect when, when I do get client, it's all about rapport building and what makes them comfortable. So I'm trying to show them the emotional side rather than just the business side. So that's what I'm really heavily focusing on. So yeah, yeah. it's it's a great platform, really, really. And it's a lot of fun to do, truth be told. Yeah. yeah. Loved it. Yeah, uh, and Vasha is a, uh, a a good talker. So uh, it very came very naturally to her. So, uh, but what I would like to put on, uh, get you to focus on is on the screen there. And this is again, Vasha, for you and you're doing your lives is think about who you're talking to. Think about what problem you solve for them. Like people don't want to be just told what to do. They need to know that you can help them and solve a problem for them. So think about what your solution is 
and then talk about the action you want them to take. So when you do your lives, pre, please offer value, don't sell. But the soft sell is more about just sort of leading them down a pathway to why your services help and where you should be taking them and why they should be contacting you. And think about a pain point. So if something in the lead up to Christmas right now is a, a topic, if there's something there that you can do to help them get through the Christmas period or lead up to the Christmas period or after the Christmas period, then that's what you want to help them with. Talk about that and then talk about what you want them to do. And I've sort of highlighted some key up, um, actions. So you usually want them to do is to purchase something. You want them to connect with you or you want them to inquire about something or you want them to download something. So think about those actions you want them to take and then talk about how you are unique and how you offer that with proof and get testimonials and things like that, that maybe be able to back up what you're talking about and think about where you've done this before. So, not everyone is a LinkedIn person. Some people may be a Facebook person, as I highlighted earlier with Rory, that um, he may go to LinkedIn for his corporate uh, arrangements. He may have more Michaels out there that he wants to build relationships with, but he would then go onto Facebook to find his consumers who would buy that product and still refer to Michael and himself between their network, but targeting them in a different way. Uh, the way the voice, the way he talks, the way he communicates would be very different on Facebook to LinkedIn. But again, it's still relevant to how you go about it. Um, and as I've talked about there, it's really un understanding your difference. So how you look, your slogans, your strategy, how you get out there and whether you're going to do advertising. Um, and that would be it. So that is my presentation at the moment. But I will, as I said, I'll put a link into the chat in a section um, at the end. Uh, right now, I'm going to put it there. But don't go there because we're still in the meeting today. But uh, go visit that page. And you'll see the live that I did earlier in the week. Um, so grab that URL or visit it and bookmark it and then go back and have a look at it uh, later on. But uh, that is my presentation on LinkedIn pages and your online strategy uh, in the lead up to Christmas.